Okay, I'm going to go through the answer key for the predict the products um, worksheet for carboxylic acid derivatives. And the first one looks like it might be an acyl substitution because we have a good nucleophile here and we have a potential leaving group. But what's important to remember is that amines are very good bases and carboxylic acids are called that because that proton there is quite acidic. So if you mix these two, we're not going to have a substitution reaction take place. We're going to have a proton transfer reaction take place instead. So, um, and once that happens, this is no longer a nucleophile because it's protonated. You don't have a lone pair. This is no longer an electrophile because it's negatively charged. And so the reaction stops here. We don't have a substitution reaction. So what if we wanted to do the substitution? What if we wanted to go from a carboxylic acid to uh, an amide? How would we do that? Well, what we need to do is we need to put in, we need to get rid of this acidic OH group and we need to put in a very good leaving group. So what we're going to do is we want to make an acid chloride instead. Because once we have an acid chloride, we have a great leaving group and you can put any nucleophile in here you want and you're going to get your uh, addition um, elimination, you're going to get your substitution reaction to take place. So uh, how do we make an acid chloride? Well, we use a reagent called thionyl chloride SOCl2 and that's going to uh, replace this OH with a Cl. We're not going to take a look at that mechanism for that. We just need to know that as a reagent. Anytime we want to make an acid chloride, we use SOCl2 on a carboxylic acid. So this two-step process would be a way to synthesize an amide starting from a carboxylic acid. Okay, our next reaction starts with an ester, and we have hydroxide, sodium hydroxide. This is a very good nucleophile, and so we expect that to add in to the carbonyl. And after it does that, we're going to end up with a charged tetrahedral intermediate. We have a good leaving group, and so we can kick back down and collapse and kick out the methoxy group. So we're going to be doing a substitution reaction here. And, uh, and that looks like we're done here, except we have basic reaction conditions and we just make it car made a carboxylic acid. So once again, anytime we have base around, we, we know that that is going to deprotonate this. And so our final product is going to be the carboxylate salt. So actually this is an example of a saponification reaction when we have an ester and we uh, do base promoted hydrolysis. We get out the salt, the carboxylate salt is the final product, not the neutral carboxylic acid. And our next reaction, we're starting with an amide. Now remember the amide is the least reactive of the carboxylic acid derivatives. It's got a very, very poor leaving group and although we do have a nucleophile here with the chloride, if we tried to have that chloride attack the carbonyl, if we took a look at the resulting CTI, the resulting charged tetrahedral intermediate, if this were to collapse, there's no way it would kick off the NH2 minus leaving group because that is very unstable. Instead, it would kick off the chloride leaving group uh, going back to this uh, starting material. Okay, so this is simply no reaction. We can't replace a uh, poor leaving group with an excellent leaving group. We can only go in the other direction. Okay, our next reaction, now we have an amide, and uh, again, very poor leaving group, but the key here now is we're adding in heat, so we can push this reaction. Uh, H3O plus means we have water, and so that's going to be our nucleophile here and after protonating the amide, we can get the uh, substitution reaction to take place and we can uh, kick out the amine leaving group. And so this would be an example of a hydrolysis reaction. Without the heat there, this reaction wouldn't happen because uh, the amide is so unreactive. Okay, our next reaction has methoxide as a very good nucleophile. We have an excellent leaving group here with the acid chloride. So starting with any acid chloride, we expect the addition elimination to take place. If you want to go to our CTI, we can do that. Now we shouldn't have to do this whole mechanism every time to just predict the product, but I just want to show you where this is coming from. But we're going to get an ester here. 
uh, acyl substitution, starting with the acid chloride. So this would be a great way to make an ester. Okay, this next example is uh, going to be a Fischer esterification. We have a carboxylic acid and we have an alcohol. And when those two come together with an acid catalyst, uh, we get a reaction to take place. We have a leaving group here. We have a nucleophile here. And when we protonate this, carbonyl would be where we would protonate. What we can get is an intramolecular addition to the carbonyl. So what size ring would that form? One, two, three, four, five. It would form a five-membered ring, including oxygen. So the oxygen is one, two, three, four, five. So we're going to get an ester with an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid, a cyclic ester we call a lactone. Okay, in our last example, we want to uh, provide the reagents here. And so we're starting with a bromide, and we now have an OH that looks like a substitution reaction. Maybe if we want an SN2 to take place, because this is a primary leaving group, so we can't have a carbocation there. So we need some very strong nucleophile like hydroxide. That would be a great SN2. Now if we take a look at this oxygen, it had one CO bond. Now it has three CO bonds. So this looks like an oxidation to me. How do I get a primary alcohol to oxidize completely to the carboxylic acid? We need a really strong oxidizing agent like chromic acid. PCC wouldn't be strong enough here. That would just give us the aldehyde. And finally, we want to go from a carboxylic acid to an ester. We want to replace the OH with an OR group. Okay, and we can either do a Fischer, Fischer esterification like we, want, like we did up here. We could use ethanol and some acid to do a Fischer esterification. Or we could go via the um, acid chloride. We could say step one is SOCl2 to put in a very, very good leaving group. And then step two would be ethanol or sodium methoxide. And that would do additional elimination. Okay, what we can't do is take this and react it right away with ethoxide because just like in the part A that we saw, this is a very strong base. Carboxylic acid is a strong acid. And these two would simply do an acid-base proton transfer reaction wouldn't get a substitution reaction. So to make an ester from an acid, we would either do acidic conditions or we can make the, the acid chloride first.